it is that time of the year time for me to make my week one predictions what is going on y'all fast force all back at it with another video talking of course my nfl and here to talk about week one of the nfl season football is finally here people i can't wait i'm so hyped i'm so excited so i wanted to get the picks video off for you guys i do this every single season and some of you guys reached out and said Pfizer, you're doing one again this year uh you know i made a decent amount of money from your picks so i said of course i am I make these for you guys, enjoy doing them. So how this goes is I give you guys a winner for every single game. So I pick the winner straight up, but I also pick a winner against the spread. So if you guys like that, spreads, betting totals, all that stuff is here for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and pick every single game for week one. And I track my record all season long. So you guys can go check out my record for my previous seasons. It's been a respectable number here. I think 60 to 70% usually I get right. So if you guys like the picks, please subscribe down below. Please make sure to have the bell notifications on. I'll get these videos out every single week. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here we go back with my week one NFL picks. All of the games here for each of the uh, teams listed and also the lines and the spreads with every single one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a straight up winner and also pick against the spread for every single one of these games. So let's get into it. We start with the Thursday night game. This is going to be a fun one. Buffalo Bills at the defending Super Bowl champs, LA Rams. The spread is minus two and a half. And I got to tell you, folks, people are going out of their minds for Buffalo. Like, I've seen Buffalo as, like, the clear Super Bowl favorite this year over every other team. And Josh Allen is a clear MVP favorite. Like, I just don't get some of these things because Buffalo is good, no doubt about it. But why are they favored over the Rams who just won the Super Bowl? Like, give some respect to the back-to-back -back defending Super Bowl champs, the LA Rams. So to me, I'm sorry, like even before I pick the winner, I'm definitely taking the Rams with the spread. It's minus two and a half, so plus two and a half Rams. But straight up, I think the Rams can win at home. I, I think the Rams are the better team. They won a Super Bowl for a reason. Like the Bills are solid, yes, but are they better than the Rams? I don't think so. And until I see it, I'm not going to go ahead and pick. So this might be going against the grain here. But that's why you guys follow me, right? I'm not going to obviously give you guys literally the, the favorites for every single game. All right, let's move on to the Sunday games. we got the Eagles at the Lions. Uh, I like the Eagles in this one straight up. Uh, the line is minus four in favor of Philly. Now, Philly is a solid team. They're better than Detroit, and they've improved a lot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I will swallow the four. It's not a big number. And I think Jalen Hurts, the running quarterback, should be able to take advantage of a Detroit Lions defense that I don't think is going to be um, you know, complete pushover, but I don't think they're going to be great. So that that's kind of where I'm at here. I'll take the Eagles and the points. Uh, let's move on to the Colts at the Texans. Uh, and to me, this one's clearly easy. Give me the Colts to win the game and give me the minus seven, a touchdown. I think this is going to be a blowout. Uh, the Colts are a very, very solid football team. They have Matt Ryan, an upgraded quarterback. Jonathan Taylor could potentially win the MVP, arguably the best running back in the NFL. And then you got Michael Pittman, like the talent is there on the Colts versus the Texans. They might be one of the worst teams in football this year. They might be the worst team in football this year. Their defense is awful. Like the Colts should be able to do whatever they want with them. I'm sorry. Like this is going to be a mismatch. All right, let's move on to the Browns at Panthers. And I got to tell you folks, I'm riding with Baker in this one. Give me the Panthers and give me minus two. If Deshaun Watson was playing for the Browns, it's a different story, but he's not. He's suspended for 11 games, and it's going to be Jacoby Brissett under center. Not saying this is going to be a blowout, but I think Baker is going to set out to uh, go ahead and take revenge against his former team for literally dumping him. And I think he's going to go ahead and go off in this game. He's got Christian McCaffrey. he got DJ Moore. The talent is there. They're at home. So all of the things add up here to where I think the Panthers – beat the Browns in week one and minus two is just not big enough of a line. So I'm going to go ahead and take those as well. All right, 49ers at Bears. And here we go. Another upset for me here. I'm going to go ahead and take the Bears. Yes, I'm a Bears fan, but hear me out. Okay, this is not a homer pick. The reason I like the Bears here, and obviously the minus seven is out of out of here. Like this is a ridiculous spread. They, there's no way the 49ers should be minus seven over the Bears. So give me the Bears spread here. If you don't want the Bears... If you don't want to pick the Bears to win, fine. At least take the plus seven. Please, I'm telling you, take the plus seven. Now, here's why I like the Bears, okay? Matt Eberflus, the Bears' new coach, with the Colts last year, he was able to stifle the 49ers' offense. They only scored 18 points against the Colts, two takeaways, less than 300 yards. 
he is going to be able to scheme up a good defensive game plan. And the fact is, Trey Lance might be better than Jimmy Garoppolo in the long term, but is he better than Jimmy G right now? I don't believe so. He's starting, uh, you know, the second season on the road, first game. And like I said, I think the Bears are going to go ahead and, and go all out to stop Trey Lance. Uh, he, they're going to make him make tough throws. And the way you beat the 49ers is you make Trey Lance throw the football. And I'm just not sold on Trey Lance early on. So I'm going to go ahead and say the Bears win this game. Justin Fields played well against the 49ers last year. I think he repeats that. That offensive scheme that they have him in suits him. And I think the Bears pull off an upset here in week one. Give me the Bears against the 49ers. All right, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Washington Commanders. I got another upset here for you guys. Give me the Jaguars. I'm a big believer, and that means I'll take the points, plus two and a half. I'm a big believer in Trevor Lawrence making a leap in year two, as opposed to whatever the heck the commanders have going out there, right? You, you lost Brian Robinson potentially for a while. Carson Wentz, we know who he is at this point. Like, nothing about the commanders team speaks, uh, you know, great volumes to me. Like, to me, the Jaguars have a chance to make a leap. Trevor Lawrence could become an elite quarterback. They got weapons for him. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram. Yeah, they're not elite weapons, but they're solid guys. So to me, give me the Jaguars, who actually have a real coach this time uh, in Doug Peterson. All right, let's move on to the Patriots at the Dolphins. And I am go ahead and drinking that juice. Give me the Miami Dolphins here to win this game, though I will take the Patriots to cover that minus three and a half. I wish it was three because that uh, point, half a point is really killing me here. Uh, hear me out, folks. The Dolphins... I really like their head coach, Mike McDaniel. I really believe Mike McDaniel is going to be a good coach. And uh, you might not be a believer in Tua, and I'm not, but you got to believe in the weapons. Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell are studs. Mike Gusecki is an underrated tight end. And, you know, the running game, we know that Mike McDaniel is going to get that going. So, like, to me, it's just a bet on talent over the Patriots with Bill Belichick and not much else. Like, the talent on the Patriots is is subpar, to say the least, right? They don't have a great receiver. Uh, tight ends are okay. Running game is okay. Uh, quarterback Mac Jones is is okay. Like, nothing about them is elite. As, as With the Dolphins, at least they have elite players at certain positions. So, to me, give me the Dolphins. They're at home. And, again, if you want to bet against it, hedge, take the Patriots' uh, points. But I'll take the Dolphins straight up to win this game because I wish this was three. All right, let's move on here to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to go ahead and take the Bengals here. Minus six and a half is a big line, so give me the Steelers to cover that. Uh, look, Mitchell Trubisky is starting for the Steelers, and I got to tell you, folks, uh, Mitchell Trubisky gets a lot of flack. He's not that bad of a quarterback here. Uh, big Ben was absolutely washed in his last couple of seasons, so Trubisky might not be much of a downgrade here, and he has weapons. The offensive line is a concern. Yes, I get it, but... The defense should be able to neutralize uh, a Joe Burrow and the offense a little bit. So that's why I said I like the Bengals to win the game, but I'll take the, the Steelers to cover the six and a half. It's a, it's a bigger line than I would have liked. All right, Ravens, Jets, this is going to be a blowout here. I'm calling it now. Give me the Ravens and give me them minus seven. If this was minus 10, I might have taken it. That's how much I don't believe in the Jets because... They don't have Zach Wilson out there. It's going to be dusty old Joe Flacco who's washed at this point. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he proves me wrong against his former team, the Ravens. But I'm sorry. I'll take the Ravens and their defense, a running game, Lamar Jackson over the Jets who just never seem to figure it out. So until I see it, I'm not going to believe it. Give me uh, – sorry. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, Saints at Falcons. Give me the Saints. Uh, minus five and a half. I'll take that. The Falcons, again, similar to the Texans, could be a worse team in the NFL. They have two elite players and Kyle Pitts and potentially Drake London. Outside of that, the roster's not good. All right? uh, the Saints at least have talent. Michael Thomas bounce back season coming. Chris Olave looks to be solid. Jameis Winston, as long as he doesn't turn the football over, I think the Saints win this game. All right. Let's move on to the Chiefs at the Cardinals. Give me the Chiefs here. And, yes, give me the minus five and a half. Um, no DeAndre Hopkins for the Cardinals. I know they're at home, but, sorry, I'll take the team with the better quarterback, with the better weapons, with the better coach. Like, everything is better for the Chiefs. Give me the Chiefs here, even on the road. All right, Giants and Titans. Give me the Titans here. A lot of five and a half lines. I'll swallow that one as well. Um, I'm not a believer in Daniel Jones. This is last year to prove that he is – um, worthy of bringing back, which you probably won't. The Titans, I'm not a believer in them either, but Derrick Henry, betting on him against Daniel Jones, I'll, I'll take that bet. Saquon could have a bounce back game. Uh, and so to me, it's just a matter of can the Titans stop Derrick Henry? 
uh, excuse me, can the Giants stop Derrick Henry? And I don't think they can. So to me, at home, give the ball to the big dog. Giants defense is okay. It's respectable. But offense, I had to be able to keep up and put a point. So give me the Titans here. All right, Packers, Vikings. Got another upset here for you guys. Give me the Vikings um, at home to straight up win this game. Look, the Minnesota Vikings have a lot of talent, people. Justin Jefferson could win Offensive Player of the Year. Kirk Cousins, one of the most underrated quarterbacks in football, just puts up numbers, all right? Uh, Dalvin Cook, top five running back. The new head coach, uh, he could be special. Like, this Vikings roster is loaded. Their defense could have a bounce back season. The Packers team, I get it. It's Aaron Rodgers and probably a, a good defense. And the running game's solid. But receivers are weak. Tight ends weak. Like, there's holes on this Packers team where I just feel like you know, a couple of things go uh, bad for them and, and the Vikings can take advantage here. I really think they can win this division. I really do. I don't think it's a lock anymore uh, for the Packers. And so to me, if the Packers are at home, I probably would have taken them, but I'm taking the Vikings because they're at home here and I believe they have more talent than the Green Bay Packers. So give me the Minnesota Vikings here to win this game. Vegas against the LA Chargers. Give me the Chargers here. Yeah, I'll take the three and a half. Folks, the Chargers are the most stacked team in football. The most act, all right? Let me tell you, elite quarterback in Justin Herbert, elite running game in, with Austin Eckler, elite receivers with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, a tight end is solid, Gerald, Gerald Everett, offensive line is solid, defense is elite with Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, like the, the, J.C. Jackson, like there's no weakness on this Chargers team. They could literally win the Super Bowl. So am I going to take them to beat the Raiders? Well, yeah, they got better with Devontae Adams, but are they better than the Chargers? No, they're not. Give me the Raiders, better team overall. I'll take the three and a half. All right, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Dallas Cowboys. Give me Tampa, or I should say Tampa Bay. Minus two and a half, I'll take that. The Cowboys are uh, weak right now, losing their offensive linemen. Uh, no Michael Gallup. Uh, Mario Cooper's gone. Like, this is a weekend Cowboys team. Uh, and I get it, the Bucs don't have Gronkowski and Chris Godwin, but they got Julio Jones. Mike Evans is still there. And he got the GOAT. You got the go. I'm sorry. Give me Tampa Bay. Who's the better team? Better defense. Better roster. And finally, Monday Night Football. This one's easy. Broncos, Seahawks. Give me the Broncos and give me the six and a half here. Seahawks, similar to the Texans, similar to the Falcons. The worst roster in football. I don't care if it's Geno Smith or Drew Locke. Russell Wilson's waxing this team. All right, enough said. So there you have it, folks. My picks and predictions for week one of the NFL season. Let me know if you guys agree or destroy as always. Thanks.